Pick a card. How do people see you? How do you see yourself? How does spirit see you? Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you at your reading. Hi friends, my name is Griselle with Psychic MD and I'm here to bring you another pick a card reading. For those of you that are new to my channel, welcome, welcome. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, thank you so much for stopping back. I appreciate all of you guys stopping in, your comments, your time, your energy. As you can see, we are up to something new. We've already selected the piles, so go ahead and pick your duck. <laughs> We're going to go with pile number one, pile number two, or pile number three. Think deep, make your selection, and I'll see you at your pile. Please pause if you need more time. Pal 1, this is your duck. Hi, Pal 1. My name is Chris Hall with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do another pick a card reading for you. Today, we're going to be doing how do people see you? How do you see yourself? And most importantly, I think, how does spirit see you? So it's going to be a little bit of a different read if you cannot tell by the ducks. We're going to go ahead and get a little bit of Sagey Sage going. If you selected pile number one with this cute little guy and the ice cream cone on his head and the polka dots, then this message is for you. Pile number one. How do people view you? How do people see you? How do people see pile number one, please? Two cards. Ah, the nine of wands. Friend, are we a bit defensive? Do we turn our back? Do we look thrice before we cross the street? Do we have our armor up? Are we quiet in crowds? Do we not allow people to be privy to what we're thinking? I can relate to that. Pile one. Give me another card, please. Uh-huh, two more. That's what's going on. The King of Pentacles and the Three of Cups. So people see you as perhaps like holding back, maybe having a facade. Um, and when I say facade, I'm using that a little bit loosely, right? We all wear different kinds of masks depending on what's going on. Fundamentally, I feel like you are very self-protective, okay? You probably have reason to be. Now, with that being said, I'm going to say that people really feel like they can actually party with you, hang out with you, go out with you, spend leisurely time, keeping it light, keeping the libations flowing, if you know what I'm saying. Um, I'm going to say that they know that they can spend that time with you but not really get close to your heart because you are defensive, okay? And... I'm looking around and I'm not entirely sure like what she's hiding from. It appears that there's some army people going on there and there's a barrel here. Um, but her walls are high and everything is burning around her. And I'm going to say that people understand perhaps you came from like really bad trauma. Not that there's any good trauma, right? But perhaps you came from like long standing trauma or trauma that people are really well acquainted with or aware of. And they know that's going to take a while to break down those barriers. But most importantly, they know that they're not going to break it down. They're going to slowly be steadfast in your life in order for those wands or those barriers or those walls to come down. I feel like people understand that it's going to take a minute for you to be able to trust. And that could be a major issue. That's what they're thinking. Also, what people are certain somebody is thinking about you is that they know quite a bit about you. I feel like this person is um, highly decorated, obviously, but somebody who's steadfast, who is focused, who's riveted on your energy, on you, indeed. I feel like this person is somebody from, from the shadows, from afar, probably distance between you guys. But this person in particular, I wasn't planning on reading for particulars, but here we are. 
This person pile number one is, I heard Admiral. Well, they could be a little bit like militant or from the military, or um, they could really admire your energy, your your intensity, I'm going to say. This person could be standing in the shadows just waiting for the right opportunity to come through. Or indeed, this person can be within your friend circle, your circle of trust, right? Um, already kind of eyeballing you and waiting patiently for you to be able to go, okay, maybe the danger is not out there. Not that that's in here, but maybe I can turn around and take a look and see it's who's within my house. So I'm going to say that people look at you um, like you have powerful friends. You have people that are willing to vouch for you. You're, you have willing, um, willing people that are wanting to be patient with you as well. And that's how people are seeing you at this very moment. Keep in time, keep in time, keep in mind that time is fluid. But I do feel like this person has been sitting here eyeballing you for quite some time. How do you view yourself? Pile number one, how do you view yourself, please? Three cards for pile one. Wow, now that's a surprise. So I feel like you could view yourself as being very dualistic. Very militant, keeping a front, very stoic, I heard. You could view yourself as someone on a mission where there is a toughness to be had and a softness to be had as well. So at any point in time, I feel like you can turn into, okay, this has got to be done. I'm going to break those barriers myself. Or you can turn the ties and bring out that softness and the receiving the feminine, at more feminine energy. And... Um, I would say you would bring about more of a nurturing sense. How do you see yourself, please? I was going to say two cards, and here they are. You see yourself as people's confidant, but you're very attached to the moon as well. I feel like you know that you have maybe a lot of, uh, maybe you're affiliated with Mercury quite a bit. Look at me throwing all the cards. You know what? This is how they want to go. And this is what we're doing. Pile one. One moment, please. The sun went down and we are yet at a different angle. So here we are. Don't do that. Okay. You didn't hear that whisper, by the way. So pile one, I feel like you know that you are people's confidant. Um, I feel like you could be, I heard public defender. I don't know what that is. Maybe you're a humanitarian or you tend to take on people's causes as a personal quest and you're willing to whip out which every, which every, whichever side needs to come out, whether it's like the harsh enforcer or um, the stoic person or the nurturing person to bring out for friends and family alike. I think that whatever the occasion is, you almost have like two different personalities to yourself to bring out into the world. And that's what I'm seeing. Also, um, I feel like you're very affiliated. Sorry about the chair squeak. Here you go. Um, with the dogs right here and the big moon in the background, I feel like you see yourself as constantly in touch with something otherworldly. It's almost like you're almost, it's almost as if you're always listening to something that other people can't hear maybe perhaps you're very intuitive and you're digesting things constantly 24 7 which would really explain the seven of wands right here i'm sorry the nine of wands that defensive mode right but i think you have a pretty realistic um view of yourself with that being said because i feel like other people around you would concur next i'd like to see how does spirit view you? How does spirit view pile number one, please? If you're liking this reading, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. <gasps> Unconditional love. Yay. So spirit views you as being unconditionally loving, but part of a bigger thing, a bigger team, part of the universe, part of themselves. I'm hearing God's favorite. If you don't believe in God, that's spirit's favorite, whatever. Um, I heard nature nymph. <laughs> that's kind of funny. I feel like you are, spirit views you as very connected, very plugged in, very tuned in. 
you can get a lot of downloads um, if you're prone to getting headaches and things like that. I'm going to say if you've already gotten yourself medically checked out, of course, disclaimer, you're welcome, you too. I'm going to say that perhaps part of the issue is that you are not sharing or doing anything about the downloads that you're getting, which is causing you some discomfort, okay? But Spirit views you as unconditionally loving, and that's incredibly beautiful. Um, I also feel like with well, this guy that you chose, I feel like you could have a really wild sense of humor, a little bit like myself. Um, you could be somebody who enjoys paint by numbers or doing things quite differently than other people. You could have freckles. You could like using filters that are like a ginger filter with a freckles. Those are really cute too. You could have a lover of ice cream or like art or things that are really off the beaten path. Spirit sees you as with the number 22, a master of swords. That's interesting. I feel like with you, it's all about the vibe. Survival. Okay, that's what I was talking about before. Spirit views you as a survival, survivalist, uh, somebody who's undergone a lot of things thrown at, at you. Um, Spirit views you as always walking through even the harshest of terrain in order to attain and achieve that which you were meant for. And once again, that's... Um, alluding to you listening to your inner compass, your inner dialogue and the dialogue and the frequency that you're tuned in and tapped into with spirit. I love the unconditional love right here for you. Spirit views that you give unconditional love as well. I almost dumped all of these cards on my lap. 10 out of 10, do not recommend. We're not doing that today. How does Spirit view pile number one, please? Spirit views you as being so receptive that all you have to do is but ask. Ask and you shall receive. Ask Spirit, ask God, ask your team, whatever it is. I feel also that Spirit says that there are people that are quite envious around you and about you because of you. That's complicated. But... I feel like people are able to see that you are in some way, shape, or form like God's favorite. Perhaps you express like a desire or an interest or an intention. And pretty soon when it happens, when you manifest it, when spirit gives it to you, however you want to look at it, um, they are a little bit shook, but also jealous. Spirit feels that you really accept the changes in your life and things with ease. Now, I don't know if that's true. I mean, I feel like that's a relative statement, right? What's easy for one person can be monumental for another. And a small step for one person can appear just a ginormous step for another. But according to spirit, you are very receptive. And I feel like um, you could be uh, someone that smells things from the other side as well. That is so awkwardly put. It's not Claire Gustus because that's tasty, but Claire Alien, I think it is. Um, yeah, for example, I can I can smell my grandfather occasionally uh, with a mixture of like chiclets, gum, and cigarettes and old man. <laughs> and no, it's not the most pleasant scent, but I can smell him around. So I feel like Spirit is saying that you really take things with ease and they really appreciate that. Um, and they are trying to raise you higher simply because your vibrations is always, always high. Um, and, and I know that we can think differently about ourselves. I personally struggle with my own self image and my perception about my spiritual progress, but spirit sees things very differently. So overall, what is your best course of action? Oh, the Knight of Wands. And the Eight of Swords. So it appears that maybe perhaps somebody is looking for you. The Knight of Cups. Did I say wands? Yeah. Somebody could be wanting to give you an apology or someone from the past bring you a cup of something. And I feel like you're going to move away from that. Your best course of action is move away from anything from the past that is just a promise of repeat of patterns that don't behoove you. That don't behoove your mission, your focus, your vision. 
It's only wanting to serve to entrap you within your mind so that you don't connect and ascend higher. And I feel like your mission does affect humanity. I know that's like a big statement right here. But your mission does affect so many other people that it would be a shock to your system if you were to be aware of it. So that's what I have for you. Pile number one, if you resonate with that reading, do give me a like, share, comment, subscribe. Let me know what your thoughts are. And until next time, namaste. Pile two, this is your deck. Hi, friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Griselle with Psychic MD, and I'm here to do your reading pile number two. If you chose this quirky duckling, then this message is indeed for you. I'm going to get a little bit of sagey sage going here to get rid of any and every energy that doesn't belong. For those of you new to my channel, welcome, welcome. And for those of you that are repeat offenders, thank you so much for stopping back. So, pile number two. You chose this cute little duck. She is actually a mermaid. I don't know if you know that from the pic. But another thing I want to share with you when I was trying to prep everything, and I've had these ducks for some time, um, and I had this idea to do something, you know, pick a card. Had no intention on putting them in water. Well, maybe I should have followed my intuition. If you chose pile number two, I'm going to let you in on a little secret. This duck did not want to float, so I had to put a votive upside down right here to help her stand up because she's got something going on in here, like a battery or something. So I thought that was quite interesting within itself. But we're going to see where this goes. Pile number two. Welcome, welcome. If you chose this mermaid duck, this message is for you. How do people see you? How do people see you for pile number two? And keep in mind, these are only perceptions from other people. The Queen of Pentacles. People see you as being very grounded, very giving. Oh my gosh, giving and giving. You could be somebody who's just giving and giving and giving. And a workaholic, okay? You could be someone who is extremely selfless. You could be a parent. I'm getting parent vibes. But I feel like your giving is not limited to any one thing. Once someone has your affection, then they're going to be privy to whatever it is that you have as well. Now, the thing to that is I feel like you could be, and don't shoot the messenger because I'm guilty of this too, a bit of a people pleaser. And the fact that this little duck wasn't swimming, instead she sunk and she was sideways, I'm going to say that perhaps there might be like a little bit of an overeating issue or a weight issue or something. And once again, I'm going to tell you that's me to a T, so please don't be offended. But this is how people are seeing you, is that maybe perhaps you don't take care of your health as much as you should or focus on your own needs as much as you should. You are others focused for sure. You're that person that if a friend needed something in the middle of the morning at 3 a.m., 2 a.m., and they were to call you from jail for bailout, they're going to call you. And if you have it, you're going to definitely do it. So I think that people are aware of this from you. I also feel like you could be someone, I'm looking at this vehicle right here. You could be someone who really loves cars, like a I'm going to say vintage cars or different cars, designer cars. Now, I don't know a lot about vehicles themselves. I just know they're expensive. <laughs> and I do know the ones that I like, but on site, not necessarily by memory. I love all the vintage cars. But I'm going to say that you could be someone who toils well into the night. You could be someone who is a snappy dresser. You love to dress to look good. You could be very intense and have a very intense gaze. She almost looks like a Hithana, like a, a little bit like gypsy vibes I'm getting from her. But I feel like you bring forth like all of your gifts and talents and you freely give to those around you, those who love you. And pile number two, I even feel like you are gifting those who don't deserve it, just to be real. 
Now, one thing that I feel like is a great misconception about you until people get to know you, I think your biggest secret is that you're aware when people try to take advantage of you, you observe it and you may give regardless and have your own reasons for doing so. Now, this could be physical gifting. This could be giving your time, energy, resources. This could also be gifting or guiding and mentoring as well. For example, you could have someone who actually, um, you could have people who actually do not like you simply because you have a lot of giving and selflessness and other people are drawn to that and they love you for it. Um, and they love you for you because you're genuine, you're a real one, I heard. But they could want to utilize those resources thinking that they're getting away with things. When in reality, you're incredibly aware of what you are giving. And I feel like you don't bother yourself with anything like that. You feel like that's petty. And people that use you for their own benefit, after a certain extent, right? I feel like you think that karma will just take care of them anyways. And I do feel like once in a while you might make it known that you're aware, which is kind of cute. I like it personally. You might have long hair. You might want to wear your hair long. You might like to wear bikinis or even like mermaids, things like that. But you're definitely connected to water element. You could be a water sign. Earth sign doesn't actually make a difference. But I feel like you're incredibly intuitive. You connect with people and on an emotional, vibrational level. I think that you see people and you reciprocate on an emotional level. Like, wow, I really see you or I really heard you. Um, and the way that you reciprocate is solid. It's tangible. I don't feel like it's all words. And, and I heard messiness because there could be some people around around you that um, wind up having a lot of words, right? A lot of things to say, but they're messy. And I feel like that's definitely not you. You're somebody who's going to offer something solid, whether it's an action or a piece of advice. Yeah, you offer clarity to those and that's solid. And people can take that to the bank, I hear. And that's really important because I feel also that people see you as somebody who is in a lot of ways stoic in spite of giving um, and, and their opinion over giving and things like that. But look, okay, I saw this TikTok and it says something like, I wish I would have, um, I could go back in time and see the, the woman that wanted to make equal rights for women to work. Um, and she lifted her fist. She's like, I want to punch you. Like, shut up. Something to that effect. And I just thought it was so funny. And I don't know why it tickled my bone. But you could have kind of a crazy sense of humor where it's like, you're very stoic. Things have to go a certain way, be a certain way. Uh, but you could be ready to like throw down. If you have to, you're going to lift that fist, right? I feel like you're, you're no shirking Violet. And you're not new to battles. And that's one thing that people get wrong about you. Now, I know that people... We're here to um, see how people see you, but I just wanted to clarify that. I feel like you can also make people anxious, not that you're making anybody do anything, but people come to you for fairness, for judgment, for equanimity, for um, a balance of the senses or a balance of opinions, a neutral opinion. I feel like even if you know that it's going to piss someone off, you're going to be really open and expressive with them. And this is very well known. That's how they see you. And I feel like this is actually see you quite clearly. But let's see how you see yourself. Pile number two. How do you see yourself? Pile number two, please. Yeah. I have a higher vision, a higher view. I'm going to give after... I look at things and see if it's worth my time, energy, emotion, blood, sweat, and tears. Is it worth it? Humanitarian. You could be a humanitarian. You guys are actually very spiritual on this channel if you've been coming here for a bit. Um, I'm going to say that you are ready to kind of weather anything. Come in from the cold, come in from the dark, go out to the cold in order to really further your cause. Like you're a real one. And I feel like you have, I mean, these owls can see, I think they can rotate their, rotate their heads all the way around, which is pretty phenomenal. 
And the Nine of Wands, that you have great defenses up when you need to. Your walls are high. You view yourself as having like really high walls, but I feel like there's an awareness with that. Like you know that your walls are high and you also know that those walls can keep out the bad stuff as well as the good stuff. And so you're striving for a balance there. And that's what's different about you and how you view yourself. Also, how you view yourself, you could feel like you are a dreamer. And I well resemble that remark, I'm going to say. Um, when you look up to the skies, you or somebody who dreams big and you have a dream and I feel like you could even put it out there like oh gosh I wish this and regardless of how old you are it's never too old to wish I feel like when you get into the sublime into your emotions about like your dedication or the drive or where it is that you are headed you really just overflow with emotion and you give it your all and that's how you view yourself as like I'm giving it my all um I'm all in all in Everybody's like, you got some chips? Yep, I'm all in. <laughs> and uh, as being somebody who's all in, that's not necessarily the best, but here we are. So then I have the chariot right here. And as you can see by this card, um, you could be somebody who's constantly in motion or going places. And I'm looking at this. It almost appears to be, to me, like ink running. Almost like the picture is... I don't know, like an ink blot is overcoming the driver or something like that. So you could always be like running, running for your life, running, causing movement in order for you not to have to like stop and be stable or stop and think about things. So you could have an issue with uh, frequent moving or wanting to jump in the car and just take off. But the chariot's also about merging the positive and negative polarities so that both horses and the traditional tarot are headed in the same direction and that chariot doesn't spill over and cause harm to everyone. You see yourself as being on, on the right trajectory and headed exactly where you need to be headed. And I feel like you have one more trip and there's this like desire that maybe you're not communicating or maybe you're trying to breathe in or suss out or um, interpret, okay? So next, we're going to go ahead and look at how Spirit sees you. For pile number two, show me what I need to see. How does Spirit see pile number two? How does Spirit see the opposition? Okay, let's take a peek. Maybe you are quick to get into the fray of things quick to cause disruption when there's no need for it. You too have been a survivor of much. You've survived much in decisions. Spirit feels like maybe you can act too hastily. Maybe you need to slow down a little bit and not have as many knee-jerk reactions. Maybe you need to go with the flow. Maybe this is giving me like um, the Wheel of Fortune vibes as well, is knowing that everything that must go up must come down again, that this is indeed the cycle of life. And if you're chasing a dream or following a dream, part of that is going to have some positives and some drawbacks as well. So being okay with that, not expecting everything to be like Hollywood high all the time. It just doesn't make sense. And there is no rhyme and reason for that. So... With the number 49, it breaks down to number 13. I think about the tarot and that's, you know, the death card. And I feel like that's what's going to be ending is for you, this spirit of wanting to fight, wanting to fight for everything. Jump in, jump into the fray for everybody else's cause. I feel like it's seldom for your own cause. But it reaches a point where we got to stop fighting at some point, right? If you attain what it is that you are seeking, your character could be that, that you want to keep fighting. Why? Because you programmed yourself or been programmed that way. So at some point, we have to say, okay, hey, when's enough and what is the next phase? And we perhaps maybe need to rethink that and or prepare for that behavior if that describes us. And once again, no judgment, I resemble that. And then, yeah, rest. So pile number two, 
Vera views you as someone who is in need of rest, who is in survival mode. Maybe you're experiencing burnout, exhaustion, depletion. Maybe you have fought too many good causes and it's time to put down the gauntlet, to put down your weapon, to put down your gear, and to get into self-mode care. Self-care mode. I totally flipped that. <laughs> totally flipped that. So, best course of action for pile number two. I already feel like it's going to be rest, rest, cease, and de desist. Yep, transformation. That goes along with the number 13 I was talking to you about a second ago. Use the power of love to move through illusions and shift into awareness. And this biggest thing is that I'm feeling right now is that we're not separate. We're not separated by anyone, by time, by element, by generations. We're actually all one. And for me, this was a really difficult idea to grasp and definitely a different philosophy to like stand behind. And in fact, I'm looking into the, um, the forest right now. And I see this big old tree and literally um, they're missing leaves that are like eyeball, eyeball and a smile. So I feel like it's, yeah, this is you understanding and getting that it's time to transform this fight or flight need that you've had for a long time, this mode of being, and it's time to become a new creation. So that is dissolving this course of action for pile number two. Besides giving me a like, share, comment, subscribe. Do you like that little plugin? Have patience with yourself. You're able to let the universal energy transformation move according to its own loving rhythm. And sometimes people need to find, fight their own battles. And sometimes we're going to have to bear witness to that. And sometimes it's painful. I get it if you're empathic at all. But sometimes you're going to have to take yourself out of the fray. Because a warrior can't always be a warrior. At some point, they have to rest and recover before they can get at it again. So that's what I have for you. Pile number two, much, much love to you. Until next time, namaste. Pile three, this is your duck. Hi, friends. Welcome to my channel. My name is Grisel with Psychic MD. And I'm here to do your reading pile number three. But prior to doing that, we're going to get a little bit of sagey sage because we can. If you're new to my channel, welcome, welcome. And for those of you that are indeed repeat offenders, thank you so much for stopping back. I hope everyone receives exactly what it is you came here for. Pal number three, how do people see you? I'm going to jump right on into it. How do people see you, pile number three? How do people see you? Definitely, I feel like they see you as being cute. They had a pentacles. Oh, that's unexpected. Okay. How else do they see you? Okay. And the seven of cups. Okay. Not unlike the vibe of number two, I'm feeling a little bit. If you feel like you were in between pile two and pile three with this guy, then perhaps, oh, hello, don't do that. You might want to visit both, but only if you feel like it. Oh, I missed with his balance there. Okay, well, we might have a drowning duck, but we're going to, we're going to muck through it here, guys. Pile number three, you're seen as somebody with a lot of options. You are definitely a hard worker a go-getter. You could be artistic. You could be futuristic. You could be someone who indeed creates something out of nothing. I feel, I feel like I resemble that remark. I hope I do, but who knows? Pile number three, I feel like you could even be like a painter or some kind of an artist and people actually have pieces of art that you've created in their home doesn't have to be like uber professional, but it's of sentimental value or it's just simply good art or a great piece to look at. 
Pile number three, you could be a really good judge of character as well. People know that you're going to make a balanced decision, whatever, whatever the cost. People feel like even at times you could be a bit judgmental. When weighing in on a decision, you're going to take your emotions out of it. People can mistake you for looking kind of cute and cuddly. I feel like uh, there's no nice way for me to say it, so I'm just going to say, I feel like aesthetically you could appear one way like, oh, look at her, look at him, so cute, so cuddly. Um, you know, they just kind of do, 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 whistle while you work, you know, all those things. It reminds me very much the energy of one of my girlfriends. She is a forest fae. <laughs> And you would never know that, you know, she can definitely hold her own. So you could be very similar in that fashion. You could be somebody who entertains a lot of different ideas and tries out different things and puts them to work and see um, if the cogs work well together. And people see you as not being afraid of trying new, th new things. I feel like this man's almost grabbing a different cup and saying, okay, does this cup work for this painting? No? Okay, next. What about this dragon? Can I do some like burning on that canvas would that make it look more interesting or more intense or would it age it a little bit um and so on and so forth and they like that about you i feel like they see this about you and you're very unconventional and that is actually very well liked i feel like people do like that about you like a lot of things about you um but people see you as maybe a little bit obsessive a little bit intense a little bit outside the box and initially I feel like they're puzzled until they actually really sit with you or get to be around you or work with you and they're able to explore a little bit more about what you are truly all about now this judgment card is interesting you could have a high connection to spirituality you could um, be some form of a clergy or they could feel like they need to confess things to you people see you as someone who keeps secrets You'll keep the secrets for other people. Very trustworthy. People hate to disappoint you. That's part of what this judgment thing is. Pile number three. How do you yourself view the? You view yourself as an anxious person. Maybe overthinking. Maybe overzealous. Even these look like matches at first glance. Perhaps you feel like you are someone whose thoughts can actually, they're like matches. They can light a fire in your mind. And you got to be careful with that. But you already know that. You also view yourself as someone who just walks away from things. I don't know if that's even accurate. I feel like everyone else had a pretty, okay, let's not be judgy. That's judgmental. But that's a skewed vision here. I feel like... <sighs> You do walk away from things, but it's only if your efforts haven't been matched or reciprocated in any way, shape, and form. The Eight of Cups is about measuring intently and precisely, very much like a mixologist would do, right? A bartender. And they would come up with these like beautiful drinks. But if you get the proportions out of line, it's not going to turn out. It simply won't work. And I feel like the proportions have been out of balance in your life quite a bit. And you've had to move away from a lot of people. I'm going to say friends, family, anybody who um, shows you any level of imbalance, you're willing to walk away. And I think this causes you stress. With the Wheel of Fortune, I feel like you, pile number three, feel very lucky. I feel like you've been around the block once or twice, as we say, and that... You've experienced many turns in this wheel. And one thing that you've learned, pile number three, is to try to stay as centered to that wheel so that you have a lot of less ebbs and flows into this journey we called life. I feel also, even with the font on this one, it's a little bit cartoonish, that you're viewing things very much like fate is a little bit like a cartoon. And it could be a little bit of an illusion in some ways in so far as like having abundance and not having abundance a lot of those things can be changing for you with the seven of cups underneath the wheel of fortune here 
you could you view yourself as someone constantly changing of riding that wheel the ebb and flow of the wheel by coming to a point in your life where you see that really only peace matters you're freeing yourself i feel from this matrix and notice how this card very much matches this guy right here so you are fleeing the gilded cage you are no longer wanting to be fed in a little cage to be placated to be maybe adored maybe even saying to i'm like all fierce <laughs> how do you view yourself pile number three you're the freaking bird you're the one who is escaping you are the one that's going to be singing and gliding and banking off of all the different winds and breezes you're the one making it happen. And you see yourself like escaping that. Yeah. With growth. And growth you're aware of doesn't come lightly. But it's also incredibly satisfying. That's beautiful. Pile number three. How does spirit see you? How does spirit see you? Pile number three. How does spirit see thee? As someone embracing your solitude, as someone who's undergone many different changes in your life, many different cycles, you have learned how to be steadfast and focused. Connecting to your higher self, I'm also seeing that you found your true north. You've suffered a lot of loss and it's taking a lot of energy, time, energy, blood, sweat, and tears, literally to be able to reach a point where you can be more balanced. I feel like some of you guys have just found your voice. Now this to me starting to look kind of icy and cold. And this even looks like a compass. So this could be your moral compass. This solitude could be that maybe you have sequestered your time, your energy, your focus, your attention in order to really serve the most high. And also to be able to explore all the different ways that you can bring spirituality and whatever it is that you're doing today with the cards that we began with, right? Into your workplace, exploring, kind of like living as an adult, but experimenting as a child with an openness, no willingness, and a, an ability to be thrilled at new discoveries at whatever age you are. Spirit sees that you receive things with ease. That you maybe like to dance. You like to dance by the moonlight. Maybe you have a rich inner world. Maybe perhaps you are definitely, maybe you're definitely, maybe you are someone who is very in tune with the other side of the veil with spirits. I feel like some of you guys are indeed mediums. And you can connect with spirits from the other side. And perhaps that's another thing that has separated you from a lot of other people. This is serving to give you new life and new meaning. I feel like this is something that you've known for a long, long time. Now I'm starting to look at these like this loss. And this is like the three faces. It's like the, the crone, the maiden, and what is the third one? I always forget three. The maiden, the crown, and the what? Well, anyways, if you remember, put it down in the comments below if you feel led to. But I think y'all know what I'm talking about. So the three phases of, of existing, basically. And I feel you've come full circle. You could be someone who has learned a lot in a short amount of time. And time, again, is relative. So you could be like 15 or you could be 75. It's like you've learned a lot of lessons and taken them to heart very quickly. Yeah, you've got purpose in your hand. You've got purpose in your heart. And those two are linking up finally. I feel like you're going to learn how to finesse those things. And you're going about it in a very graceful manner. Things are changing for you. The number 27. 7 is very spiritual. It's connected to the most high. To higher learning. Higher vibration. And I feel like you are going to be able to... It's almost like there's a lot of buoyancy. These these cards and this little duck seem to really be able to go together quite well. 
With your newfound freedom, I feel like you're using it for the good, not for just let me enjoy what this 3D life has to offer. But true freedom and things that are essential, things that affect other people in ways that you could not have begun to predict when you were perhaps 15. Spirit sees you as someone who is in need of self-love, but also... You might be loving up on yourself, but I feel like spirit wants you to know how much you are loved. Again, spirit being God, spirit, your ancestors, all the above. Spirit's asking you to maybe get in touch, to close your eyes, to really breathe into what they have to offer because I feel like that's going to give you a lot of peace what and you're going to get a surprise maybe perhaps you'll wind up getting a new gift out of this I feel like you're very very gifted um and you could be going through like gifts quickly like oh wow I discovered how to paint and oh wow I discovered I could be mechanic and oh wow I discovered uh, I don't know I can engineer things and you're like one of those people and spirit's like okay now time to slow down and breathe in prana life force Get very, very still. And we're going to guide you from here. Because those experiences within themselves are great. Oh my goodness, yes. But you need to get still to ground them. Ground them. And we're going to bring it right back down to the 3D. Because as fun as it is in the 5D, in your mind, and your emotions. And living this like wonderful life that you can implement so many different things. Including energy work. It's going to be time for you to check in with them on a deep spiritual level by deep breathing and getting focused in order to bring back whatever it is that you need to bring back from the 5D. Pile number three, you can't make this up. If you're liking this kind of reading, do give me like, share, comment, subscribe. How does spirit see pile number three? Clearing. Pile number three, you need to ask your guides for help more often. <laughs> Stop. When I look in the camera, this duck's mouth literally looks open like it's amused and laughing, okay? Um, I'm hoping that's going to translate. It's just a shadow trick of the lips, the duck lips. Don't judge me here. We're all having fun. But I'm going to say it's almost like spirits like, hey, hey, yo, yo, hey, ask me for help. Are we sinking? Are we not swimming well? Are we swimming sideways? Are we top heavy? What's going on here? You can always ask spirit for help. And I forget this quite often, pile number three. So it's going to be very important that um, you don't worry about your crown. You don't worry about how you look. You just go to spirit and ask, hey, I need help. I need help with my finances. I need help with my perspective. I need help with with going at it some more or self-love and care so I can feel rejuvenated and have that ability to come back into the world and function at my best. So yeah, spirit sees that you need a rest, but you need some clearing. I'm hearing heart chakra with this hand being yellow. Your solar plexus can need a clearing out, okay? Get a friend who can help you do it or seek a Reiki healer or your massage therapist or anyone special in your life, your acupuncturist. I feel like once you clear that out, you're going to be reaching for the stars, your north node. You're going to be fulfilling your ultimate purpose. And it's going to have all of these different features combined so that life will not be boring, but you'll be so much more effective and you will see why you have gone through so many different things in your life and it will come full circle in a very powerful and useful way and i'm being led to say that i'm even like putting my hand to my heart it's just pretty amazing i feel like you have some heart chakra energy there that maybe some heart wounds that need to be healed as well that's actually green i didn't notice that before um but i feel like this is all going to help you to speak your truth and you're going to head towards Whatever it is that you were designed to, you personally were chosen for this moment and time. Pile number three, if you like that kind of read, again, do give me like, share, comment, subscribe. I hope you enjoyed it. And if not, well, then I hope you have fun or that you are amused. Much, much love to you. Until next time, namaste.